Hi, I'm Mark Brown at Superhome 59 and this is a video all about recycling the things we no longer need. Now I'm starting here in the kitchen where most, if not all, of our recycling starts. Now I'm standing in this particular corner to point out a couple of obvious items that we have in the kitchen that other kitchens might not necessarily have. Now on this area, this is where we have tea and coffee. There's obviously a kettle and a water jug. But in this area here, we have a little bowl. Now this is for organic waste. There's a tea bag in here, there's tissues, there's some grapes and other chippings and basic food articles in here. Now they are going to end up in the compost heap. Now the local council do supply us in High Wycombe with green bins for recycling foodstuffs and food waste and other garden waste. We never use it, in fact we never even got one. All our food waste goes into the compost heap and I'll show you more of that later. Another element to see in the kitchen is what's going on over here, various jam jars and bottles and a couple of bottles that appear to be upside down or what's going on there. This is a plastic milk bottle with the label has been removed. Okay, So this sort of recycling glass and plastic generally starts in this area because we remove the labels and we generally give them a bit of a wash first. Now I know many people don't do this, it may be semantics for many, but actually it's common sense. If you wish to do recycling, it's best to separate the plastic from the paper labels, from the plastic labels, because it makes recycling so much easier at the recycling plant and enhances the value of recycling. Here is a glass bottle upside down simply to drain the liquids out because we've been asked to make sure they are dry in the recycling box. Here is the lid to that self-same milk bottle. Now it used to be that we were asked to crush the bottles and put the lid on so they stayed crushed. But that's no longer the advice we have in High Wycombe. In fact we're now asked to keep the lids separate and actually we still crush the bottles, they don't stay quite as crushed as before, but they do actually take up less volume. Now it doesn't so much matter about our recycling bin because that is really, really large and we don't have a large consumption of recyclables. But what it does matter really is for the recycling lorry. Now here I am at the kitchen sink and there's a couple of items here to be recycled. I could if I wanted to wash up the water bottle, but to be honest, that would be a waste of hot water. Now we do use the hot water at the end of the washing up in the bowl to soak off labels, but generally it's not a really sensible thing to do to generate hot water to waste it on recycling, so generally just use waste water for that purpose. Here I am just cutting off that label. Can't recycle that sort of cellophane, but I can recycle that. So I'll put that to one side with the lid separately. What we have here is a small plastic container that was used for grapes or some kind of fruit. Now that's perfectly clean, it doesn't need to be washed so I'll recycle that directly. But there are other containers that we do have around the house that are quite dirty and they'll be rinsed out of any dirt in the washing bowl at the end of the washing up when everything else is cleaned and dried and put away. We do like to make sure our recycling is free of labels and quite clean. But that can be a problem for any items such as this bottle here that have a paper label well stuck on. Some of these labels are quite stubborn to get off and you get a lot of glue coming off with them. Other labels just come off quite easily. I can name you that Heinz tomato ketchup bottles do they will slide off very easily as soon as you soak them, as do Branson pickle bottles, but for some reasons olive oil bottles seem to be quite stubborn. But in the end, we scrape off the labels anyway. Now I've just come out of the kitchen and I'm going into the garage where all our recycling boxes are. We're quite lucky that we have a large garage for this purpose. And here's that recycling we saw earlier. Now the big blue bin here with the big number five on it, that's our mixed recycling box. As you can see, it's a large wheelie bin in our area. Now I'm going to crush that as best I can, just to help. Now 
here's two further items I can recycle. Tetra packs and tin cans. They also go in the same mixed recycling box as all the plastic containers and as you saw the glass. Now next to it is the regular black bin which all the genuine rubbish goes into. Now to give you a reflection of the relative volumes of these two, although they are the same size container, let's have a look inside. Now it isn't easy to see in here, so I'm going to shine a torch down there. Hopefully you can have a little bit of a look. If I tip the camera over a bit further, make things a little bit simpler. As you can see, this bin is relatively empty. There's only a couple of small bags in there of rubbish and a brochure that can't be recycled because it's laminated. Now compare that to the bin next to it. As you can see this bin is almost full of recycling. So what does that tell you? Well firstly it means actually most of the volume of rubbish going out of the house is actually being recycled. There's vastly more material in there than there is in this black bin. It isn't quite that simple, of course, because our bin collections are once every two weeks. And last week it was a turn of the black bin, and this week it will be the return of the blue bin. So actually, to be fair, there should be twice as much in there as here. Actually, there's four times the volume in there, which just goes to show just how much we do recycle here. Very little is going out in the black bin. Now when we switched from once a week to once every two weeks, of course there were the normal squeals of agony from people who just have to throw stuff away and who cannot be bothered to recycle. To be honest, for us, we were absolutely delighted because we couldn't see what the point of all the waste was. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to scan over here to the other side, just next to my car and to the black bin, and this is the paper recycling area. Now as I told you before, the recycling trucks are due this week, in fact tomorrow, because this, this is Sunday and they clicked on Monday, and this box is actually pretty full. And again, it goes to show that we do recycle a great deal in this house and all the paper, apart from shredded paper, goes into this bin. Shredded paper has to go into the compost heap. And let's talk about that next. Okay, so remember this little chap in the kitchen? That's not going directly into the compost bins outside. We have an intermediate bin in the garage. Let me show you. This little scraps bowl we have from the kitchen near the area where the tea bags are generated obviously isn't very big and it fills up on a daily basis. So behind me we have a simple recycling bin that we use basically on a weekly to monthly basis and this is where all this organic waste goes in the meantime. Now the only thing about storing organic waste like this for a week or more in a warm garage where there's a boiler behind me and a car here is that you will occasionally attract some insects and fruit flies as we occasionally get every year. Luckily this year due to a relatively cold and mild spring and summer actually we haven't got any flies in here at the moment which is very good. But actually we stock up on quite a bit of this to spray in there occasionally to keep away the flies. And also we have, if you can just about see here and here, some fly paper around to try and suppress the flies. Now I'm gonna empty the bin outside and show you what we do with that. And what I do with that is walk down to the bottom of the garden and shove it in the compost heap, as you're about to see. It's a relatively short walk on a lovely dry summer's day like this in July. This is quite pleasant, but of course in the middle of winter, my wife and I will vie as to who gets this chore to be done and it's normally always me. The compost heap is a three bin system as you can see. The third bin is to the right and it's covered with plastic tarpaulins weighted down with bricks and with tiles. I scrape out the contents of the bin can take quite a little bit of scraping because it gets uh, well embedded in there, quite dirty, and then spread it around and put the plastic tarpaulin back and weight it down again. 
I'm then going to go back to the house, but I'm going to stop by the water butts and I'm going to give though that container a bit of a rinse out. One of the reasons for rinsing it and the lid is actually to wash away any of the eggs and maggots from any flies that may have laid eggs in the area. And that will cut down on any infestations you might have of flies in the garage. So there we are, just washing that out into the garden and I'll pop the lid back on. And pretty much Bob's your uncle, that's all done for another week. And here we are back in the kitchen again. This is the end of this video about our recycling here at Super Home 59. I hope it was of some enjoyment and uh, some entertainment and some infotainment value to you. Of course, the recycling arrangements in this area of the United Kingdom may differ from yours. We have a basic three bin system, rubbish, recycling and paper, and the organization in your area for your council may indeed differ. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Please tune in to our other Super Home 59 videos in the series and see what else you can find out about us. And if you really want to come and see us, drop us a line, go to the Super Home 59 website or to the Super Homes website itself and please book a visit and you can discuss anything you've seen here with us directly and with me personally. In the meantime, you too can recycle and you too can conquer your house. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.